This is an audio test, audio test to the live stream, testing audio to the live stream. This is Long Beach Community College District Board of Trustees meeting. Today's day is June 21st, 2023. This is an audio test, testing audio to the live stream. Testing audio to the live stream, checking one, two. Hey, Dario, this is Udawa, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Looks like Jenny and Mike and I are on. Hi, Dario, can you hear me as well? I heard you, Mike. Thank you. Audio check. This is another test to the live stream. Testing audio to the live stream. This is the Long Beach Community College District Board of Trustees meeting, June 21st, 2023.
Audio test, testing audio, audio test, testing audio to the live stream.
about time for you to start. Or you might watch. Four minutes. No. Hi, Dr. Baxter, just want to let you know your mute button is not on in case you wanted to mute yourself. No, I know that. I just unmuted myself. Okay. It's okay. What? Now, she's got the TV on. Can you hear the TV? Um, I can't hear the TV. I heard you guys talking a little bit back and forth, but I, don't, oh. I didn't hear the TV. No. Okay. I'll be careful once the meeting starts. No Thank problem. Thank you, Mike. It's no raining problem. in Washington. Oh, no. Yeah. Is it humid? Is it... Is it really humid or is it? Well, actually cold. High oh, wow. in the 70s. Yeah, that's that's interesting for D.C. Yeah. Well, we went to the Capitol today. And the White
Okay, we're going to call this meeting to order at 434. This is the June 21st, 2023 Board of Trustees regular meeting. I'm Herlinda Chico. I'm the president of the board, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. We're going to um, need a roll call vote, so I think we need a voice vote because we have two of our uh, trustees that are participating remotely. So can we have a voice vote roll call, please? Sure. I'm not voice vote, <laughs> roll call. Of Thank course. You. Virginia Baxter? Here. Herlinda Chico? Here. Vivian Malaulu? Here. Uduak Joe Intuk? Here. Sunny Zia? Here. Thank you. Item 1.3, public comments on closed session items. A total of three minutes will be allotted to each speaker and a maximum of 20 minutes per subject. Board Secretary, are there any requests? I have not received any requests for comment. Okay, great. So um, we're going to move on to 1.4, just um, for our closed session agenda, conference with legal counsel. Um, 1.5, a personnel uh, pursuant to government code section 54957, public employee employment performance evaluation, discipline, dismissal, release. Item 1.6, LBCCFA, CHI, LBCCE, AFT, and management team, negotiation teams pursuant to government code sections 3549.1 and 54957.6, district chief negotiator, Lori Mishua. Uh, item 1.7, conference with legal counsel, anticipation, anticipated litigation, significant exposure to litigation, threatened or anticipated litigation, Initiation of litigation per government code sections 54956.9b, 54956.9d, 54956.d, 0.9d, 2, 54956.9c, two cases. We will now go, uh, we will now recess into closed session. The time of recess is 436.
We're going to reconvene open session and call this meeting to order at 537. Um, can we have the Pledge of Allegiance? And I would ask Alex, our student trustee, to deliver it since this is likely his last meeting. Next is item 2.3, or land acknowledgement. Uh, Long Beach City College acknowledges our presence on the traditional ancestral land of the Gabrielino Tongva peoples. This land remains unceded territory. We acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal from this territory. Long Beach City College honors and respects the Gabrielino Tongva ancestors and their connection to this land. Item 2.4, roll call, board secretary, please call the roll. Virginia Baxter. Here. Herlinda Chico. Present. Vivian Malaulu. Here. Uruak Cho Intuk. Here. Sunny Zia. Here. Alex Hernandez. Thank you. Um, item 2.5 is report on closed session items, and there is nothing to report out on closed session. Um, item 2.6, public comments on agenda items. A total of three minutes will be allotted to each speaker with a maximum of 20 minutes per subject. Board Secretary, any requests? No, no requests. Thank you. Item 2.7, approval of the minutes of May 24th, 2023, regular Board of Trustees meeting. This is an action item. Do I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Thank you. Is there, can we please, oh. Any discussion? Hear none. Can we please have a voice roll call or a voice vote? Thank you. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Erlinda Chico? Aye. Uruakcho Intuk? Aye. Sunny Zia? Aye. Uh, Herlinda Chico? Aye. And student trustee, did we? Oh, I'm sorry. Student trustee Hernandez? Aye. Thank you. Uh, I, I, my name wasn't called, but it's an aye. I'm sorry. Vivian Malaulu. Aye. Great. The motion passes. Item 2.8, the reordering of the agenda. Any requests to reorder the agenda? Okay. So before we move in, before we move into item 3.1, uh, I'm going to turn over the meeting to Vice President Malaulu. I'm not feeling very well, and so um, she'll take over from here, and I will stay as long as I can. Thank you. Thank you, President Chico. We do hope you feel better and uh, stay as long as you can, and we understand when it's time for you to exit. Uh, just a couple of pointers before I begin. I'd like to acknowledge uh, that we do have an acting board secretary tonight. Um, Michelle Reese is on vacation. Our acting board secretary is Lauren Zale. Welcome, Lauren. You're doing a great job so far. And also, um, and I know that this was previously stated by President Chico, but uh, our student trustee, Alex Hernandez, who uh, will be leaving us, he was actually elected for another term, has made a decision to not continue um, based on the needs of his family and the fact that he is going up north to Cal. So this will be student trustee Alex Hernandez's last meeting, and I'm sure we will all say wonderful things about you at some point during this meeting. We're going to miss you. All right, moving on to item 3.1 on the agenda. This is a recognition for Aaron Moore, Citizens Oversight Committee. Aaron Moore has lived within the Long Beach Community College District for more than 24 years, and he is a proud graduate of California State University, Long Beach. Mr. Moore has been with the CSU Office of the Chancellor since 2010 as an administrator. 
He understands the importance of investment in higher education, particularly infrastructure and deferred maintenance. He also has experience in nonprofit financials as he serves as the CFO of the California State University Foundation. Since 2014, he has volunteered to serve on the LBCC Foundation Board of Governors, holding a variety of officer positions, including president. The LBCCD Board of Trustees approved Mr. Moore's appointment to the Citizens Oversight Committee on April 25, 2017, to represent and support organization for the College of LBCC Foundation for an initial term of two years. The LBCCD Board of Trustees subsequently approved Mr. Moore to serve two additional terms of two years each for a total of six years of service on the Citizens Oversight Committee. Notably, Mr. Moore served as chair of the Citizens Oversight Committee 2019 to 2023. This committee has the important responsibility of representing the community of taxpayers who have invested in LBCCD's bond-funded construction projects and monitoring the fiscal health of bond accounts and the audit of bond-related financial records. Throughout the duration of Mr. Moore's tenure on the Citizens Oversight Committee, each annual audit was issued with no findings. That is a very big deal. And the program was found to be in compliance with all requirements. The district is grateful for Mr. Moore's service on the Citizens Oversight Committee and would like to acknowledge his contributions to ensuring the integrity of the bond-funded construction program, which will impact students for many years to come. At this time, I will defer to Vice President West to say a few words, and I believe you, you have a plaque. Oh, there we go. Uh, we do have a plaque for him. I don't believe he's here this evening. He was unable to make it. Uh, but in my short time with the district, uh, Aaron has been an incredible asset for us. We're going to be very sad to see him leave, but after a very long tenure serving this district. And so we're really honored to, and proud that the board's honoring him tonight. So thank you. Thank you very much. Would any trustees like to comment, uh, say a few words, yes. even though... He's not present. Vice, I'm sure he will. Vice President He's, Milo, may I say something? I, certainly, Dr. Baxter. What I was just going to say is that uh, uh, Aaron Moore is certainly probably tuning in and watching, or he will. And you just reminded me, Dr. Baxter, I neglected to acknowledge that Dr. Baxter and Trustee Untuck are both Zooming in. They're joining us remotely. And if you're interested in knowing where they are, um, as Required by the Brown Act, uh, trustee Dr. Baxter is in Washington, D.C., and trustee Untuck is in Denver, Colorado. So they are joining us remotely, and all of that has been properly vetted. So I apologize that I neglected to mention that sooner. Dr. Baxter, you have the floor. Yes, thank you very much, Vice President Malolu. I, I just wanted to uh, salute Aaron Moore. I am the one who proposed him to be on the bond oversight committee because I, uh, and he's a member of uh, my district, a resident of my district. And and he's doing, he did a fabulous job and a very dedicated person <clears throat> as well as being very dedicated to the LBCC foundation. So I just wanted to thank him on behalf of the residents of area five. That's it. Thank you, Dr. Baxter. Those were very kind words. And uh, we go on record accepting the plaque on his behalf. And now we will move on to item 3.2 on the agenda. This is a resolution for the LGBTQIA plus Pride Month. I do need a motion and a second that the- so that the Board of Trustees, I got you, Trustee Chico, that the Board of Trustees adopt Resolution 062123A, recognizing LGBTQIA plus Pride Month as submitted. I have a motion from Trustee Chico. Second. I didn't hear that second. Where did it come from? Second, Trustee. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was like, I was looking right at Alex and I didn't see his mouth move. Where'd that, where'd that voice in the sky come from? Trustee Untuck with the second. Any discussion on the item? Trustee Chico? So I'm a little uh, short of breath, so this won't be long. Um, I just want to thank um, 
the Affinity Group for putting together beautiful events this month, um, kicking it off uh, celebrating Harvey Milk Day and the raising of the pride flags. Uh, it's so important with everything that's happening in our country right now that we demonstrate very visibly, very vocally, that we support our LGBTQIA plus um, members of our community. You know, raising the flag is one start. There's states that are banning uh, the teaching of Harvey Milk, a great activist that the LGBTQ community um, has to, to look at uh, and celebrate uh, somebody part of their community that made a difference. Uh, I'm really sad that I missed the roller rink uh, yesterday. I was unfortunately uh, in the emergency room, but um, I'm hoping to attend some of the other uh, events coming up. So thank you for all of the hard work that everyone's done. It's so important for, for everyone to see what we're doing because we see them. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Chico. Trustee Zia? Thank you. Um, be beautifully said, um, and I couldn't agree with you more, President Chico. Um, it was, it's just really unfortunate and heartbreaking that in 2023 we're witnessing um, discrimination and such atrocities, continued discrimination, and um, we won't stand for it. We'll stand by our LBGTQIA plus community, not just by raising the flag and in um, substantive ways in addition to that. Um, I have to say that my heart was broken when I saw what was happening at Glendale um, Unified School District and um, just the violence that took place because of some things uh, so basic as trying to instill human rights and teach about rights and um, the curriculum. And um, I hope that we can turn a corner in this front. I can't believe we're, taught, uh, we're still to this day in 2023 having to fight the fight, but um, um, I will gladly vote for this. And I'm proud that our institution is supportive. Anyone else with any comments? Um, I, I would also like to commend uh, the Affinity Group and the rest of the organizers of the LGBTQIA plus Pride Month and also um, last year when Trustee Chico brought the resolution forth for the first time. Um, the reason why I think it's important is even though uh, people always say you don't mix religion, you don't mix politics, you don't mix sexual preferences or orientations and conversations at the table, the fact of the matter is that as educators, we have all of that in our classrooms. And while we may not always agree, it is imperative that we agree that mistreating people for any of those reasons is wrong. And that's the part that we stand behind as educators to make it safe, a safe place for anyone to be able to learn and share and partake in activities with the uh, knowledge that they are protected and that they have administrators and teachers and counselors who will support them no matter what. And that's what a lot of people in, in some communities fail to understand. They allow their own personal bias to prevent them and allow themselves to mistreat people. And that's the part that we shouldn't, we shouldn't have. So with that, um, I am going to take a personal privilege because I would like to invite Dr. Jerome Hunt to the podium to speak. However, I know that Dr. Jerome Hunt will also speak on the next resolution. So um, in the interest of time, we do have a motion and a second on the floor. I'm gonna ask our acting secretary to take the vote and then we're gonna move on to the next item. We'll go ahead and take that vote and then Dr. Hunt, you can have double the time, how's that? Would you like to address those? Vice, and then, Vice President Malolu. And then we'll take a picture. To, I don't know how to raise my hand. I, I hear you, Dr. Baxter. Go ahead. Okay. May I just say something quickly? Um, and I, if somebody could tell me how to raise my hand, I'll do it. Uh, I, I agree with you completely. And I want to praise Dr. Munoz for his commitment to making sure that all people are heard from, all people are made uh, comfortable 
safe going to uh, attending college classes and being on our campus. And I'm very proud of that. Thank you, Dr. Baxter. We appreciate that. And, and you could speak up uh, whenever you need to, and then we will pause. And just a correction, uh, uh, Trustee Chico actually introduced this resolution and this motion in 2021, not 2022. It's one of the first things she did after being elected to the board. So Dr. Hunt, if that is okay with you, I'm going to, uh, we're going to proceed and we'll come back because we also want to take pictures with each resolution. So we don't want to get up and down twice. All right. So, Madam Secretary, if you can please take a roll call vote on uh, Resolution 3.2, which, by the way, is this one of our uh, widely recognized throughout Long Beach LBCCD resolutions. Student Trustee Hernandez? Aye. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Herlinda Chico? Aye. Vivian Malaulu? Aye. Uduak Joe Entuk? Aye. Sunny Zia. Aye. Motion passes. We will move on to item 3.3 on the agenda, resolution recognizing Juneteenth. This is also an action item that the Board of Trustees approve resolution 062123B, recognizing Juneteenth as submitted. Can I get a motion, so please? So moved. Second. Trustee Zia with the motion. Trustee uh, Chico with a second. Sorry, Dr. Baxter. I heard Trustee okay. Chico. All right. So now that we have a motion and a second on the floor, any discussion? Yes, I'd like to speak. Trustee Baxter. Uh, thank you. Um, last week, uh, Vice President Malaulu and I attended the Juneteenth ceremony, and I want to praise Vice President Malaulu for sharing her story which was a wonderful story about her experiences. And I want to thank the, the uh, students and Dr. Hunt in particular for putting together the Juneteenth event. It was very well attended, very positive. Um, I thought a real tribute to our college. And I'm so glad that this happened and I was able to participate for a short time before I had to go to another meeting. Thank That's you, it. Dr. Baxter. Trustee Chico? I'm sorry that I missed the event. Um, I, I had a work conflict and wasn't able to attend, but I did hear, hear how beautiful it was. And it's so important that we continue to highlight our, our different groups, our communities, our affinity groups, um, visibility, representation, all of that means so much. So just like with our LGBTQIA plus community, it's important that we celebrate our communities and make people feel important and seen. Um, so I'm so proud that um, this institution does that. Thank you for all the work. Thank you. Anyone else? Trustee Zia? I, I just wanted to say I was there in spirit. I'm sorry I couldn't make it, but I'm fully supportive of the resolution and the strides we're making in advancing human rights, especially in this regard. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Untuck, I'm, I'm just going to um, ask if you would like to make any remarks. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Hey, I just want to echo uh, uh, gratitude to uh, the organizing uh, group and, and Dr. Hunt for the Juneteenth event. Um, I know this is, I think, year two now that it's official holiday. This is the uh, first time we, we now have uh, everybody has the federal holiday off and recognized on campus. So it's, it's a great, great progress. You know, I've shared personal story and history in the past. Also, I want to um, congratulate and thank um, Carl Kemp for putting on a great citywide event uh, for Juneteenth this last Saturday uh, downtown. It's um, really nice to have a, a positive event supporting African-American culture and history and recognizing uh, the freedom, you know, post-emancipation from slavery, and it's uh, um, really a, a, a great community-building effort for people of all backgrounds. And so, uh, but just want to thank thank folks for organizing and recognize the great work that's happening. 
Thank you, Trustee Untuck. And I would like to echo my colleagues' remarks. I also attended last week's event, as Trustee Baxter stated. It was a great event, and I did have an opportunity um, to share. I won't do it now, but um, the only thing I will say, for those of you who missed it, I'm going to give you the cliff notes. Uh, even though I am Latina, and even though I was born in Honduras, I knew what Juneteenth was before I knew what Cinco de Mayo was. So that, that's my summary of what I said last week. So with that, Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Student Trustee Hernandez. Aye. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Erlinda Chico. Aye. Vivian Malaulu. Aye. Uduak Joe Intuck. Aye. Sunny Zia. Aye. Motion carries, and Dr. Hunt, if you would do us the great honor of speaking on both the LGBTQIA uh, resolution and the Juneteenth resolution. Well, thank you very much. Um, first, I'll speak about the June, I'm sorry, the LGBTQIA plus uh, uh, Pride Month. I just wanna say thank you to the college for being continual supporters of the LGBTQIA plus community. Uh, the visibility is definitely seen by our students. I'm glad to say that this year at our Lavender graduation, we had the most students we've had thus far. I think we had uh, close to 30 students, and we started out with probably like five or 10. Um, so we're definitely gaining momentum there. Um, we've had a successful Sip and Paint. We've had a successful uh, Meet Your Village uh, this week, and we're also going to do something new this year. We're doing a Meet Your Village for the Viking Summer Voyage to welcome our new incoming students that may identify as LGBTQIA. Uh, Plus, so that way they can get connected with resources and uh, individuals on campus. So that's going to be taking place on the 28th. We're also doing an uh, outdoor film screening of Paris is Burning. Well, it's actually going to be indoor. So we're doing a film screening of Paris is Burning with a ballroom competition. We're doing five different categories, and we're giving out trophies to the best in, in each of the categories. And that's taking place on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> And then our final event uh, for the month is our Drag Bingo Fundraiser, which is taking place on Thursday, June 29th at 5 o'clock in the Nordic Lounge. Um, the tickets are on sale now, so I encourage people to purchase your tickets. All proceeds are going to the newly established Dr. Wendy Kennig LGBTQIA plus uh, Student Scholarship Fund. Um, we are having uh, 50 free tickets for students, um, so any students that are here or listening online, you can come for free. Everybody else, I'm asking that you pay at least a $25 fee, uh, hopefully more, uh, to help our, our students out there. And the last thing I want to mention about uh, Pride Month is that we're happy to announce that uh, this fall we are starting an LGBTQIA plus learning community. We're starting off with English, um, English One and Counseling in the fall, and then in the spring we're gonna be doing poli uh, Sci One and History, um, I think it's uh, 10, um, so we're excited to do that and we're gonna be paying for books for students, um, thankfully for the grant that we got from the Chancellor's Office. Um, so we're excited about that and we're gonna be spreading the word about that. So if you know any students that are interested, please uh, send them my way so we can get them connected with that. So, and then in terms of Juneteenth, <laughs> I just wanna say thank you for giving the space for us to be able to recognize this holiday. This year we did a little something different. Uh, last year, uh, for those that remember, we did a, a community fest um, out in the A quad area. This year we did a celebration of black voices where we had students and community members. Uh, we had dancers, we had spoken word artists. We even had uh, an 89 year old resident who was um, originally from Africatown, Alabama, I believe it was, who spoke about their experience. Uh, it was a very powerful, moving experience for many people in the audience where we honored the past and, you know, definitely uh, shined a light towards the future. And we also uh, awarded our, our inaugural 1865 award. So our first award went to a student, as, as we call the 1865 Viking Award, went to Soraya Leonard, who is going on to UCLA. Um, she's our current, well, our former Emoja Club president. Um, we had a Viking Courage, I'm sorry, the 1865 uh, Courage Award, which is given to a faculty or staff member, and that was given to Angela Folks. Um, and then finally, we had a community award given uh, called the 1865 Empowerment Award that went to Rex Richardson, who we were fortunate that he was in attendance and he did definitely uh, stay and took pictures with the students and talked to the students, so they definitely appreciated that. So we just uh, thank you for the support that you're giving uh, to the community and allowing us to have uh, black voices be amplified and celebrated on campus. Thank you, Dr. Hunt. It, it, it was a really nice event. And Evelyn Knight is one of my constituents, and I just okay. adore her. 
I, I could hear her talk about Africa Town over and over again. It's just always something new. So we have two resolutions for you and two photographs. So if my colleagues would join us in the center and Jerome, come on out. Did you bring a change of clothes so it could look different? <laughs> Thank you, everyone. We're going to move on the agenda to section four, standing reports. I'd like to call on the very talented and accomplished Alana Jolivet for our ASB president report. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi. Uh, I know this is my last bot meeting. I'm so sad. Alex is leaving. Everything is changing. I'm, <laughs> I don't know how to handle this all, but I just want to say thank you so much for including us in graduation. That was something so spectacular that you honestly, my best friend graduated. I got to see it. So the photos, you'll never be able to get back. So I was like, oh my God, thank goodness. So I just want to say thank you so much for including us in such a special event. Um, outside of that, currently I'm serving on the RFP uh, Food Services Council as far as bringing in somebody and we're so excited to advocate on behalf of the students. So I have myself as well as my secretary um, sitting on that and we're so excited to see food come on campus because we know the students are excited to see food come back to campus. So outside of that, I do have Coco Dubard as the new president. So you'll be seeing her next month. So she said that she's so excited to come in. She already knows the lay of the land. She currently was uh, a part of our council already, so you've probably already seen her face. So she's really, really excited. And she said, let them know. I'm so sorry. I missed it. So you'll see her next month for sure. Um, outside of that, I really don't have anything else. It's summer, as you can see. So, so uh, if you have any questions for me outside of that, definitely feel free to reach out. But I will miss you all. I'll still be on campus. I'll be here graduating next year, hopefully uh, trying to connect over to USC, the Annenberg program. So we'll see how it goes. If I have any luck like Alex or hard work ethic, I should say, uh, I'll be there. So I'll see you guys all next year as well. So thank you. Thank you, Alana. Good luck to you and thank you for your service all year. It's been a pleasure having you serve as ASB president. And I've heard that there's gonna be an opening for student trustee. So you may wanna consider running for the position. 
It's been several years since we had a woman student trustee on the dais with us. I'm just saying. So, you know, there's an election coming up. All right. At this time, we're going to move on to our student trustee report. Alex, this will be your last report. Make it good. No pressure. <laughs> Thank you, VP Malululu. Um, so uh, we were able to attend the ceremony commencement. Um, thanks to the committee uh, for amazing celebration, right? Uh, great turnout. Uh, voice actors were amazing. Um, volunteers, everything went perfectly fine. Um, and I was able to not only attend, but also walk and graduate on, on that ceremony. So I am very grateful to be on that committee <laughs> planning. Um, but as uh, everybody has um, already announced, it is with great sadness that I announced this will be my last uh, meeting as a board uh, student trustee. Um, it came to a conclusion where, uh, you know, my daughter wanted to spend more time with me and um, I am going to be at Berkeley uh, for the fall semester, so I, I want to dedicate more time with my family. Um, but I do want to uh, give uh, my appreciation to everyone here that has made this happen to me, um, starting off with EOPS, ASB, um, Destino. MSI, all the amazing programs, honors programs, um, without their help and support, I wouldn't have been the person who I am now. And so I'm deeply grateful for that, um, especially for my campus mom that she's here now <laughs> in the audience, uh, Dr. Sonia De La Torre. Uh, couldn't, I couldn't have been more grateful to have met this individual. She's been a guardian angel and she has actually, um, you know, polished me to be the man that I am. So thank you so much for everything you've done. And I know that, you know, I'll continue making you proud up there. So this would not be the last time y'all will see me. <laughs> and like she said, I grew out this pond, so it's time to be a shark in a bigger lake over there. <laughs> so, but thank you so much for everything y'all done. I, I'd like to take a moment of personal privilege to just um, my favorite Alex Hernandez story is when we were in Washington, D.C., and we had to lobby 15 different offices and uh, elected officials. And as the day grew long, Alex's pitch grew better and stronger and clearer and more concise. And it got to the point where we got to the last couple where we just sat back and said, go ahead, Alex. Dr. Munoz and I were like, you know what? You got this because you, do, you were doing a great job by yourself. And I was very proud of you. It was, it was like watching the evolution of Alex that day. So I know you're going to do fantastic at Cal. Good luck. Go Bears. All right, moving on to sec, uh, item 4.3 on the agenda, Academic Senate President Report, Suman Mudanuri. Thank you. So good evening, Board President um, Chico and Vice President Malaulu, distinguished board members and colleagues. Um, I wanna start off by commending the hard work of the faculty this past year. It's been a year of overwhelm, overwork, but everyone showed up in force for your students. Whether you're teaching online or on campus, you made sure our students received the best education and knowledge that they needed to either move on in their next course, their program, their certificate sequence, get the job they needed in the workforce, obtain the skills they needed to get that promotion. Um, and I hope everyone takes the advantage of the summer to get some rest, relaxation, and rejuvenation. We had an awesome graduation a couple weeks ago, one of our largest uh, to date, and um, this is always one of my favorite days of the year. It was really wonderful to celebrate with everyone here on the campus. Um, I wanted to highlight some new faculty leadership that will be serving this next um, year. Uh, I'd like to start off with curriculum chair, and I wanna thank Doug Raffel for his service. He um, was willing to take on that role after a really tragic moment for us at the college. And he took it on quickly with grace, kindness, and collegiality when I reached out. Um, but he has stepped down and Dr. Colin Williams will now be serving as our next curriculum chair. Um, Candace Dickerson will be serving as our next student equity coordinator. Um, Lisette Rodriguez will be serving as the new study abroad coordinator. 
Tricia Wilging will continue as our Student Learning Outcomes Coordinator. Um, Leslie Forehand will also continue as our OER Coordinator. We have a new Honors Coordinator, but not so new because this Honors Coordinator served before, uh, Jeff Wheeler. Um, and our Adult Learning Coordinator, which is a new role, will be um, Dr. Kieran Barr. Um, our Senate Executive Team. So, you have already seen why the next individual was elected. Dr. Jerome Hunt will be serving as the next Academic Senate President. Um, I'd like to highlight that he will be our first black male president ever in the history of this college for the Academic Senate. Oh, but I'm not done. We got Christine Charles Bohannon as our Vice President. So not only did he make history, but now we've made history again as the first two black individuals in president and vice president role at the Academic Senate at Long Beach City College. Big deal. Um, Angelie Francois will be serving as our secretary this next year. Heather D as the LAC rep, Catherine McMurray, LAC rep, and Lorraine Bluen as PCC rep. Alana and Alex, I want to say that it's been a privilege serving next to both of you, watching you grow in your leadership roles. You are both exemplary, and I look forward to working for one of you in the future. <laughs> um, finally, I know this is my last official board meeting as Senate President. It's been a privilege to serve the faculty in our wonderful institution. I have learned so much from each of you here on the dais um, and across this campus. There are some fantastic and remarkable people that work here at this college, and many of them are often unnoticed and unrecognized. So I wanna end by thanking the board for the inclusion of these resolutions each month um, and recognize the intersectionality of each of us here on this campus. It's appreciated to have these acknowledgements because they serve as continued commitment that the institution, our college leadership, and you as the board have for those of us here at this college who have often feel marginalized or invisible in the world that we live in. And that's the end of my report and thank you. Thank you, Suman, and we would also like to acknowledge, as you stated, that this is your last board meeting, and it's been a pleasure and a privilege serving alongside you. I am going to miss your very well-organized, outstanding monthly reports, uh, your ability to articulate all the things in the Academic Senate so well uh, has been refreshing. We really appreciate that, and I believe uh, I have the privilege to speak on behalf of the board right now when we thank you and we appreciate the professionalism with which you represented the Academic Senate. So we will miss you. Moving on to 4.4, uh, CC Sadler is not here and I'm not sure if she was acknowledged as uh, last month, it being her last meeting, was she? Okay, good. Uh, that was the, the meeting that I was absent. My son was graduating. So I was at a graduation, so I missed it. So CC, if you hear this, uh, thank you uh, for me. But I have the great privilege of welcoming the new incoming classified Senate president, Mr. Ben Chase. Ben, welcome, and you've got the floor. Thank you, I appreciate you all for having me here tonight. Um, as you can see, um, I don't look like CeCe, I'm a tad different for it. My beard kind of grew out during COVID. Lauren and I had a meeting of the mind. She's like, do I know you? And I'm like, yeah, we actually do. It's just been a while, so it's a little change for it. Um, for tonight, I just wanted to give you a little overview of some of the things that have been going on this month for the Classified Senate. Go ahead, Dario. So commencement was a big thing for it. And I, I, I get goosebumps just even talking about it again. If you can tell, I'm wearing my grad fest t-shirt tonight. Um, I love t-shirts when we get them and opportunities to show off the college. We had an opportunity to have a meeting of the minds, the groups, and individuals across campus this year for commencement. Um, a big thank you to the union, the faculty association, and the faculty groups to invite us all to come together for a pre-commencement gathering. Um, and we had some fun times with people enjoying karaoke singing together and it was just something that I forgot because we haven't done this in a long time. We haven't been together and just having some fun and celebrating and seeing what it's like to come together and do some things for that. And I just wanna thank everybody that dedicated their time and support 
to us and allowed us to participate in that, Dr. Munoz especially, for letting some of the departments close to show up and be a part of commencement for that day. Dario. Some of the highlights for commencement. As Alex pointed out, we participated in the planning and grad fest. We volunteered for commencement duties, assisted in setup. Um, my hands are still in the cramp mode from folding thousands of programs on the day of their ceremony, like an hour or so before we were gonna place them out. Um, we watched in the commencement ceremony. Um, CC walked again, representing the classified Senate. I think this is, if I remember correctly, somewhere in the 30s of years that she's been part of commencement and planning. And I know it's a big thing for her and super important that she was there to represent us all for that day. Um, we handed out programs and directed guests. Um, one of my colleagues, um, she put sunblock on but forgot to put it on her neck. <laughs> and she came back to the office and we're like, what happened to you? And we're like, ah, I know where you were standing for it. Um, we shared the good times with our colleagues across campus. And again, I appreciate that opportunity. We had games in the room, music playing. And again, my colleagues jumped up to do karaoke at 12 noon for it. And I appreciated that. And most importantly, we got to celebrate with our LBCC graduates and their families. I said that there is no day that I feel better about. I work in enrollment services and I work on the financial aid side. So a lot of the folks I interact with are usually in not so great situations, things that are happening to them and they need extra assistance from us. And this is a chance where I get to see all of their hard work and our effort pay off for it. And it's an amazing thing, Dario. And this is just something I wanted to share. I'm not gonna read all of the stuff, but I will share the one quote part. When I say this, I'm speaking for every student here. Thank you for all you do for us. And this is one of my um, work study students in our office. This is what I came back to my office on commencement day for and got this email. And as you can see, there's some other additional things in that she said, and I'm not sharing all the things because I didn't get full permission from her to share all of it. But I just thought it was key and important that we understand that we all play a role for our students, as small as you may think it is, or as big as you may think it is for it, in that they appreciate what we do for it, in being able to have this recognition from a student on her day of celebration was momentous for me, because it's not common that you get this from students in a way that's shared out for it, but I appreciate that, Daria for it. Um, this is just a quick thing for our leadership that we're going through some of the um, events and participation for CS is our governing body for classified senates, Daria, and professional development that we participated in recently at the Classified Leadership Institute in Visalia. I will say one downside to this, they always do this the week of our commencement, which all makes, makes it impossible for all of us to participate in it, um, but we're hopeful that going forward we'll be able to do more. Um, my colleagues got to engage in discussions with statewide partners, um, develop topics for future discussions. Um, critical one, um, Sharon McMahon shared with me, is talking about a topic to discussions of ways to engage our students to become full-time and assist them with work experience in the process. Now this is a critical thing that we've already started somewhat at the college, but a critical step that they wanna do through the chancellor's office. And this is especially for our black and African-American students in figuring out how to better assist them in core success and being a part of the community at Long Beach City College. And more importantly, go ahead, next slide, Dario. My colleagues were able to celebrate some time together and bond as a team. As you can see in the photo here is Grace Galvez, Latanya Hardin, Ariane Lee, who's in our audience today, and Sharon McMahon, that were our representatives at the conference for it. So we thank them for doing that today. Next slide. And some of the things that we're looking to do, especially for me, I wanna engage the classified professionals at LBCC and bring back some team bonding events. So one of the things we're gonna do in the near future is a night dive event that they host at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Um, we're looking to participate in a Hollywood Bowl. We're gonna get a bus and take about 50 to 60 of our colleagues to the Hollywood Bowl for a concert this summer. Um, trying to do some things at the hangar um, to do like a lunchtime, get together and meet up. Um, we all seem to forget and realize that we work in desperate areas on different campuses and we don't get a chance to see each other regularly besides in a Zoom meeting. So I'm trying to be sure that I'm present with as many of them as I can and as many of them as we can get together and share in that. Another critical thing is we're building out our classified Senate. Um, we are gonna have up to 12 senators now from LAC and PCC, um, as well as two vice presidents, one for each campus, so that we have better representation than we had previously with just our eight senators and one VP for it. Um, big thing that we're already working on with Jennifer Holmgren and team is building out a CPC committee schedule, developing a better and stronger relationship with our co and tri-chairs 
for it to deliver a quality experience for all of our participatory governance activities and so that we share the knowledge that we gain better, not just by the group that participates in the council, but out to our body as a whole for it. Another thing that we're looking to do is increase and enhance the present representation on our PG committees, a big one that's coming up, uh, CSAC, Campus Safety, for it. We'll be having a tri-chair and we'll have a minimum of five members from Classified on that, which is a critical one for us. And um, that we share more in the shared governance at Long Beach City College. And this is just the thank you here, a photo of the folks that were with us in the last couple of years for it. And hopefully in the next meeting, I'll be able to provide a newer photo with our new representation and share out who some of our new officers are as well. And thank you for Ariane showing up to support me tonight. Thank you very much. We appreciate you being here, Ben. Welcome. And that was a great first report. You set the bar pretty high for yourself. All right, we're going to move on to item 4.5. I understand that um, LBCC FA bargaining president Suzanne Engelhart is not here. She has deferred her time to Jeff, is it Sable? Sable? Sable, Jeff Sable, pardon me, who is the new PAC president. Is that correct? Uh, PAC chair. PAC chair. Thank you very much for the correction. Welcome. You have the floor. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to formally introduce myself to the Board of Trustees. I believe I met each of you except uh, Trustee Mala Ulu. Um, and so I look forward in the, in the future to meet you and um, to build uh, some collaboration and work together and really build a synergy to share with the community the magic we're doing here at Long Beach City College. Um, some of the magic is, uh, you know, just yesterday I was leaving work and a, um, a blind student needed help uh, navigating to her classroom. And she asked me a few questions on our stroll to the classroom. And she asked, you know, what do I do here? And I told her I'm a librarian. And she said, do you like your job? And I said, I love my job. This is the best job I've ever had in my life. And she goes, well, why do you like it so much? And I said, you know, I was a wayward student, a wayward teen, a wayward young adult, and a librarian really inspired me to take my education seriously. And I want to pass that on to my students. Another piece of magic that happened this morning was I showed up at swim class, and unbeknownst to anybody, we are hosting the Women's World Cup of Polo. So we have international teams from Israel, New, e New Zealand, Spain, and they're all practicing here, you know, future Olympians or actual Olympians. And it's just, you know, you're not going to get that in any other community college. And that's just the magic and the power and the, and the, the you know, the best of what Long Beach City College has to offer. And, you know, if you love Long Beach City College, like I know you, like I love Long Beach City College, and I, I know everybody here probably loves it just as much as I do. You know, I want to work with you guys to make it, make the college and the city even better. And I think, you know, the first step to that is a fair and equitable contract for all our faculty. And um, yeah, and I just look forward to, to really, you know, working together with each of the Board of Trustee um, members in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. We look forward to working with you also. Item 4.6 on the agenda, AFT bargaining Vice president. president oh, Lord sorry, Lord. Trustee Zia. Since there was some time left, I just wanted to recognize if that's okay. Um, Jeff, I am so um, proud of you and impressed with you. I'm so grateful you're here. Um, the work that you do is a testament of the type of work and service. And th sometimes, you know, the unsung heroes um, of our faculty for our students. Jeff is on the helping uh, homeless committee with um, Trustee Baxter and myself, namely Trustee Baxter. I'm very hands off with the committee at this point. Um, and he's been doing it on his own time among other faculty and classified staff and showing the love that they have, you have for our students. And as of November, 2022, um, the committee that Jeff has been involved in has helped over 1,400 students, unhoused students. That's as of November of last year. So thank you. I just wanted to recognize you for the work you do. 
Uh, I know you think um, you don't do it for the credit, but I just wanted to express my gratitude. Thank you, Vice President Malalu. Thank you. Item 4.6, AFT Bargaining President Report. Is Robert Rometta here? All right, item 4.7, Chai Bargaining President Report. Is Crystal Mejia here? All right, we're gonna move on to section five on the agenda, 5.1, the superintendent president report. Dr. Munoz is on a well-deserved vacation and Dario will play a video on his behalf. Good evening, everyone. I apologize for not being there in person tonight, but I could not let such an exciting month pass by without reporting out to all of you. We have been extremely busy celebrating our students these past few weeks as we hosted multiple end of the year ceremonies from the honors dinner to the nursing and medical assisting pinning ceremony, athletics, and the cultural grad celebrations, it was a wave of celebrations. I was thrilled to attend as many as I possibly could, and it really warmed my heart to see so many of our campus community, our trustees, faculty, staff, management, executive leadership, also in attendance to help celebrate our students. This truly is my favorite time of year. Congratulations to our bond management team. Their work on our very own Building M will be recognized tomorrow night, June 22nd, with an award to be presented by the Construction Management Association of America, Southern California chapter. The CMAA is North America's only organization dedicated exclusively to the interests of professional construction project management. Congratulations. LBCC held a Memorial Day event on May 25th to remember those service members who made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. We had the ROTC from Lakewood High School present the colors, Chaplain Randy McConnell from the California State Guard as our keynote speaker, and student Vaughn Forsyth who played taps. All gave some and some gave all, and we thank them for it. Thank you to Dr. Corral and his student services team for organizing this special ceremony. I was thrilled to present our student Isabella Alvarez with a Rancho Los Alamitos Cottonwood Scholarship at their annual awards luncheon. She is the Cottonwood's very first scholarship recipient from Long Beach City College. Isabella is a third semester horticulture major who will be interning at the Rancho and will work on helping visitors identify the plants they see. Congratulations, Isabella. We held our annual pride flag raising event on Harvey Milk Day at PCC this year. The flag will wave on both campuses through the Long Beach Pride Weekend in August when LBCC makes a splash down Ocean Avenue at the parade. We hope as many of our colleagues and campus community members will join us August 6th to walk in the parade. We officially kick off Pride Month on June. It's a month filled with some fun and poignant programming. Here's a video to share with you to talk about this year's theme. At Long Beach City College, we're proud to celebrate the month of June as Pride Month. This year's theme is Transform the System. There are approximately 1.6 million trans adults who live in the United States, almost the equivalent of the population of Phoenix, Arizona. Currently, there are 533 anti-trans bills across the United States. Out of these, 62 have passed and 374 are still active. These bills aim to restrict restroom usage, participation in sports, and prohibit gender-affirming care. As each of these bills are passed, our trans community is receiving the message from the masses that they should not exist and do not deserve to exist. Unfortunately, California is not immune to anti-trans legislation. In March 2023, an amendment was proposed to AB 1314, which would require public schools to notify the parents if a teacher or employee of the school becomes aware of a child who identifies at school as a gender that does not align with the child's sex on their birth certificate. We must remain vigilant against these efforts that aim to harm members of our transgender community. Here at Long Beach City College, we celebrate our diverse community. We want you to know we welcome and celebrate our trans students, staff, and faculty. We have an affirmed name process. We're also working to increase the number of single stall restrooms accessible to students and increasing signage where single stall restrooms can be found. We are providing gender affirming garments free of charge to students who want and need them. This Pride Month, we want the LGBTQIA plus community to know that you are all welcome and matter. Please check out our website for a full list of our Pride Month events. Thank you for watching and happy Pride Month. And of course, I saved the best for last. Commencement was everything we could have imagined this year. I want to thank the commencement committee who worked for many months to create a thoughtful, organized, and inclusive ceremony. Congratulations to Chair Deborah Miller-Calvert and her team. 
Our keynote speaker, Shaquille Brewster, did a great job inspiring the class of 2023, as well as this year's valedictorian, Sarah Floyd. Here is a video to relive so many great memories of a spectacular day. Today is monumental. It's a monumental representation of all you have accomplished under historic conditions. You are a historic class. This is your legacy. Again, I wish I could be there with you. I am grateful for your leadership trustees, and I am confident that the best is yet to come. And this concludes my report for this academic year. Go LBCC. Thank you, Dario, for playing that excellent video that Dr. Munoz prepared for us. It doesn't even seem as if he's not here. It feels like he's right here with all that energy. All right, we're gonna move on to section six on the agenda presentations, 6.1, there are no items. Section seven on the agenda, board of trustees, 7.1, there are no items. And section eight on the agenda, this is the consent calendar. Any item may be removed, section 8.1, from the consent agenda and considered separately if a member of the board of trustees so requests. Maximum time for discussion of items removed from the consent should not exceed 25 minutes per item without approval of an extension by a majority of the board. Do we have any requests? Seeing none, we're moving on to item 8.2, approval of the consent agenda. All agenda items listed under the consent agenda may be acted upon by one motion to approve. Do I have a motion? So moved. No, second. I have a motion by Trustee Zia, second by Trustee Baxter. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, can you please take a roll call vote? Student Trustee Hernandez. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Herlinda Chico. Absent. Vivian Malaulu. Aye. Uduak Joe Intuck. Abstain due to a potential conflict of interest. Sunny Zia. Aye. Motion carries. Moving on to section nine on the agenda, human resources. Item 9.1, employment contracts. We need a motion and a second. We have one, two, three, four different contracts. I'm going to read the information pertaining to each employment contract. I will entertain one motion unless the board chooses to bifurcate and separate all of the contracts. This is that the Board of Trustees approve the employment contracts as submitted. The following employment contracts provide employees with a term of employment and annual salary, along with health and welfare benefits and life insurance. Irania Freeman, Associate Dean, Academic Success, Inclusion and Support Services. The term, July 1, 2023 to June 30th, 2025. Salary, $164,797 annual. Suman Mudunuri, Interim Dean, Career Education, Term, July 11th, 2023 to December 31st, 2023, Salary, $72,078.82. Starla Thomas, Interim Director, Strong Workforce, July 1, 2023 to June 30th, 2024, Salary, $112,155 annual. Vanessa Garcia, Director, Psychological Services, July 19th, 2023 to June 30th, 2025, salary $158,106 annual. And the new hires are actual, all four of them are new hires. Is there a motion and a second? So moved. So moved. Motion by Trustee Zia, second by Trustee Baxter. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'm sorry, Trustee Zia. 
I just wanted to congratulate you. Um, really grateful that this item is coming up, and congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Madam Secretary, if you would please take a roll call vote. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Herlinda Chico? Absent. Vivian Malaulu? Aye. Uduak Joe Intuck? Aye. Sunny Zia? Aye. Motion carries. Item 9.2 on the agenda, indefinite salary rates for district employees. This is also an action item. I need a motion and a second. It is recommended that in anticipation of any potential financial uncertainties, negotiations, legislation, or other factors, that the governing board hereby declare that all salary rates be declared indefinite for the fiscal year 2023-2024 for academic employees represented by LBCCFA and CHI, classified employees represented by AFT, management team employees, and other unrepresented employees as submitted. The purpose of this declaration is to permit the district the flexibility to provide retroactive compensation increases without violating the California Constitution. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. <laughs> Trustee Baxter, was that a second? Yes. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I actually would like to um, ask, uh, Dr. West, is this in your wheelhouse? Or is this in uh, Dr. Loy Nashua's wheelhouse? 9.2? OK, so the only thing that I would like to ask is uh, the statement that I read is heavy. And just for the benefit of the public, if there's any way that you could um, explain it in layman's terms, because I know that it's a, it's a heavy item and the language is a little, a little big. Mm -hmm. I can go ahead and um, elaborate on that a little bit. So typically what we would like the board to, um, we would like to, the board to go ahead and pass this motion because it allows the board flexibility. So whenever there are changes to that salary schedule, it can be done, especially with negotiations going on. Uh, as you know, we, um, have on the agenda tonight for the AFT group's uh, settlement coming forward. And so um, it is a little challenging to uh, allow for the um, input of all of that information and make it on time. And there's a possibility of a retroactive pay. And if that happens, the district has that latitude to be able to have a retroactivity in payment. Dr. West, would you like to add to that? Sorry, yeah, um, I think, you know, the confusion I've, is that, yeah, as we move forward, we want to be able to have that retroactive payment option going forward. So that's why we're looking for the board to approve this this evening. So as there's changes to that salary schedule, we can make those adjustments moving forward. And it, this gives flexibility in order for us to do that. That helps to clarify a little. I have a follow-up question. Um, obviously, we have the legal right to do that. Otherwise, it wouldn't be on the agenda for us to consider. But is there any potential conflict to any of the bargaining units that we as a board are allowing changes to be made to the salary schedule outside of negotiations? Not that I can think of at this moment. But there are also other groups that were having negotiations, you know, moving forward that we haven't settled yet. So it would be another component in which this is necessary so that we can um, have that retroactivity. And this would go into effect effective July 1? Correct. And how would that, what impact would that have on the ongoing negotiations? Um, as we settle in the future date, we don't know when that might happen it would have to be retroactively um, put in place on July 1st for the remaining groups. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any additional questions from other board members? All right. Madam Secretary, we have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Herlinda Chico. 
Vivian Malaulu. Aye. Uduak Joe Intuck. Aye. Sunny Zia. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item 9.3 on the agenda. This is LBCCD, AFT, AFL, CIO tentative agreement. Should we cue, applause, have it ready? Let's just have it ready. This is an action item. I need a motion and a second that the Board of Trustees approve the tentative agreement dated July 1, 2023, reached between the district, LBCCD, and the Long Beach Council of Classified Employees, LBCCE, AFT, AFL, CIO, regarding the 2023 successor contract negotiations as submitted. So moved. Second. I'm going to delay your motion and second until I finish reading what I am obligated to read, but, but they are both noted. For the benefit of the public, we do have the attachment with the tentative agreement, if anyone would like to look it over. And the district and the Long Beach Council of Classified Employees, LBCC, AFT, AFL, CIO, engaged in the 2023 successor contract negotiations and reached a tentative agreement attached on May 25th, 2023. The term of the successor agreement is from July 1, 2023 through June 30th, 2026, with no reopeners. Implementation is contingent on ratification by both the District Board of Trustees and the membership of LBCC EAFT AFL CIO. This agreement concludes LBCCD, LBCC EAFT AFL CIO negotiations for 2023. I did hear Trustee Zia's motion, and I believe that was Trustee Untuck's second. Is that correct? correct? That All right. One second before Trustee Baxter. Okay. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I would like to congratulate the negotiating team for the district, the negotiating team for the classified union, and commend you. Um, my union personally has just gone through um, months long negotiations, so I know the stress that that places on your membership. And I know the stress that that places on the institution. So I can appreciate that we have been successful in reaching this tentative agreement. I am uh, excited that we're able to provide another three-year contract. That has always been a goal of ours since I've been on the board. So I would like to um, express gratitude to both sides. And uh, even though it hasn't passed yet, would just like to congratulate the fact that we're here today, right before the academic year ends. Having said that, Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Herlinda Chico is absent. Vivian Malaulu. Aye. Uduak Joe Intuck. Aye. Sunny Zia. Aye. Motion carries. Congratulations. Now you can play the applause there, everybody. Congratulations to our classified. We appreciate you. We thank you for all that you do on campus, and we are very happy to be here in this place with you. Moving on to section 10 on the agenda, Academic Senate. Item 10.1, modifications to general education plans A, B, and C. This is an action item. I need a motion and a second that the Board of Trustees approve the addition of courses to general education plans A, B, and C as submitted. For the benefit of the public, those are attached. Can I get a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee Zia, second by Trustee Baxter. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Student Trustee Hernandez. Aye. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Herlinda Chico. Vivian Malaulu. Herlinda Chico absent. Absent, I'm sorry. Vivian Malaulu. Aye. Uduak Joe Intuck. Aye. Sunny Zia. Aye. Motion carries. Item 10.2 on the agenda modification to the graduation proficiencies and general education requirements for local degrees and associate degrees for transfer. This is an action item. I need a motion and a second that the Board of Trustees approve the modifications to the graduation proficiencies and general education requirements for local degrees and associate degrees for transfer as submitted. They are attached on board docs for the benefit of the public. Can I get a motion and a second, please? So moved. Second. 
Motion by Trustee Zia, second by Trustee Baxter. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Student Trustee Hernandez? Aye. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Herlindo Chico is absent. Vivian Malaulu? Aye. Uruak Joe Entuk? Aye. Sunny Zia? Aye. Motion carries. Item 10.3 on the agenda, new modified and inactivated programs. This is a motion item, an action item. I need a motion and a second that the Board of Trustees approve the new modified and inactivated programs effective fall 2024 as submitted. They are attached on board docs. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Okay. Second. Motion by Trustee Zia, second by Trustee Baxter. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Student Trustee Hernandez? Aye. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Herlinda Chico is absent. Vivian Malaulu? Aye. Uduak Joe Entuk? Aye. Sunny Zia? Aye. Motion carries. Item 10.4 on the agenda. New, modified, and inactivated courses. This is an action item that the Board of Trustees approve the new, modified, and inactivated courses effective fall 2024 as submitted. Can I get a motion and a second? So moved. So moved. Motion by Trustee Zia, second by Trustee Baxter. Any discussion? I would like to invite the public to go to board docs, click on item 10.4 on the agenda, click on the attached list of new modified and inactivated programs and share this widely. I'm going to read off a few of the new courses we'll be offering here, beginning jewelry. We've got um, digital and social media. We've got uh, critical thinking using computers. Uh, we also have modified courses such as front end website development, fitness and, wel and wellness, more welding classes. And then we've got distance education addenda. So we've got a whole slew of new courses. Um, so it's, it's a robust academic uh, repertoire that we are very proud to offer. There's a motion on the floor. Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Student Trustee Hernandez? Virginia Baxter? Aye. Herlinda Chico is absent. Vivian Malaulu? Aye. Uruak Joe Entuk? Aye. Sunny Zia? Aye. Motion carries. Section 11 on the agenda, academic affairs, item 11.1, .1, new and or revised board policy and administrative procedure, chapter four, academic, we're only on chapter four? That can't be. I feel like we've been revising our board policies forever. Apologies, chapter four, academic affairs, board policy 4100, second reading, and administrative procedure 4100, informational. This is an action item. I need a motion and a second that the board of trustees approve and adopt the revised board policy. Chapter four, academic affairs, board policy 4100, second reading. We've got two here. BP 4100, graduation requirements for degrees and certificates. Revised second reading, this replaces BP4019 and BP4023. Also, AP4100, graduation requirements for degrees and certificates. This is revised, informational only, replaces administrative regulation 4019 and 4023. Can I get a motion and a second? Move approval. Uh, second. Motion by Trustee Untuck, second by Trustee Baxter. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Student Trustee Hernandez? Virginia Baxter? Aye. Herlinda Chico is absent. Vivian Malaulu? Aye. Uduak Joe Untuck? Aye. Sunny Zia? Aye. Motion carries. Item 11.2 on the agenda, new and or revised board policy and administrative procedure, chapter four, academic affairs, board policy four, no number has been assigned, and administrative procedure four, no number has been assigned. I need, this is a first reading. So um, attached to board docs is BP 4, 
XXX because the number hasn't been assigned. Open Educational Resources, it's an OER, it's the first reading. And then there's AP4XXX, no number has been assigned. Open Educational Resources, OER, new informational only. Moving on to section 12 on the agenda. Yep, yes. Before we go forward, I just wanted to um, say something to that item. Yes. On um, 11.2 and, and this being student trustee Hernandez's last meeting, this is the culmination of his motion that we worked on last semester of creating a policy. There's a first reading and second reading on open education resources, OER. And I just wanted to note that for him that uh, it's still moving forward, even though it took longer than we thought. Well, you know, government and institutions take a long time. So thank you. Uh, I'm glad you were here for the first reading and you'll be tuning in next month for the second reading, right? All right. Thank you, Trustee Untuck, for highlighting that for us. Section 12 on the agenda, administrative and business services. Item 12.1, the tentative budget for 2023-2024. This is an action item that the Board of Trustees approve the tentative budget for 2023-2024 as submitted. This action is in accordance with California Code of Regulations 58305 and a directive from the Chancellor's Office, which states that on or before the first day of July, the governing board of each community college district shall develop and adopt a tentative budget. Governor Newsom released the May revised budget on May 12, 2023. It reflects the projected state revenue deficit of $31.5 billion. The decline in state revenues result in a corresponding decline to K through 14 education funding. The governor is funding the 8.22 statutory COLA, but to balance the budget, the governor relies on fund shifts, limited borrowing, and a withdrawal from the safety net reserve. Prior year deferred maintenance and COVID relief block grants are reduced by 452.2 million and 344.7 million respectively. The impacts of these changes are included in 2023-2024 tentative budget for Long Beach Community College District. Just a little bit more here. The tentative budget is starting to point excuse me, the tentative budget is starting point for the next fiscal year. It includes an operating surplus of 10.1 million. However, it does not include several key items that are not yet resolved as of the completion of the budget, such as negotiated salary increases, additional benefit increases, other negotiated items, and the impact of the classification and compensation study. As these details and the particulars of the final state budget become known, they will be included in the adopted budget, which will go to the board for approval at the September meeting. I need a motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Zia, second by Trustee Baxter. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Student Trustee Hernandez? Aye. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Herlinda Chico is absent. Vivian Malaulu? Aye. Uduak Joe Entuck? Aye. Sunny Zia? Aye. Motion carries. Item 12.2, five-year construction plan for 2025-2029. This is an action item. I need a motion and a second that the Board of Trustees approve the annual submission of the district's five-year construction plan for 2025-2029 and authorize the superintendent president of the district to sign the formal documents that authorize action on behalf of the district as submitted. The five-year construction plan is an annual document required by the state chancellor's office for projects that the district expects to pursue currently and over the state's budget window of 2025 to 29. The purpose of the fiscal year construction plan is to show the state the district's use of facilities compared to student demand and to determine the funding worthiness. The FYCP does not obligate the district in a financial or contractual manner. A total of nine capital construction projects have been identified for this year's FYCP, which are consistent with our 2041 facilities master plan. 
Approval of the FYCP is being requested to meet the state's July 1, 2023 deadline. I need a motion and a second. Move approval. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Untuck, second by Trustee Baxter. Any discussion? I have a question. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, don't we usually get this type of request earlier in the year? Is it customary that we would get this in June when the deadline is July 1? So typically this document would come to you in June and we do a follow-up at the August board meeting with a more de detailed analysis of construction projects coming forward. So it's kind of a two-stepper. Uh, there haven't been many changes. We've just updated this document. There's no major shifts. So that's why, again, we're bringing it here and then we'll discuss it further at the special board meeting next week as well as uh, the future board meeting in August. Got it. Thank you. And just to confirm that it doesn't obligate us, right? We're not committed to anything. Correct. It's a it's a laid out plan that shows the state our consistency moving forward in outlining future planning projects and key projects for the institution, but it's not a required plan uh, that we have to follow. There will be modifications as we go forward as new information comes forward or as our priorities change. Got it. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Student Trustee Hernandez? Aye. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Herlinda Chico is absent. Vivian Malaulu? Aye. Uduak Joentuk? Aye. Sunny Zia? Aye. Motion carries. Item 12.3, resolution cash flow borrowing from the Los Angeles County Treasurer. Action item, I need a motion and a second that the Board of Trustees adopt resolution number 062123C to authorize short-term borrowing of up to $157.1 million from the Los Angeles County Treasurer as submitted. Is there a motion? So moved. So moved. Motion Very by good. Trustee Zia, second by Trustee Baxter. Sorry, Trustee Untuck, you're too slow over there in Colorado. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Student Trustee Hernandez. Aye. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Herlinda Chico, absent. Vivian Malaulu. Aye. Uduak Joe Intuck. Aye. Sunny Zia. Aye. Motion carries. Item 12.4, resolution cash flow, temporary interfund cash borrowing access. I need a motion and a second that the Board of Trustees adopt resolution 0621. 23D to authorize short-term borrowing between funds of up to $36.1 million as submitted. So moved. So moved. Trustee Zio with the motion, Trustee Baxter with the second. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Student Trustee Hernandez. Aye. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Herlinda Chico. Absent. Vivian Malaulu. Aye. Uduak Joe Intuck? Aye. Sunny Zia? Aye. Motion carries. Moving on to section 13 on the agenda, student services. 13.1, revised board policy and administrative procedure, chapter five, student services board policy 5040 and 5900, second reading, and administrative procedure 5040 and 5900, informational. I need an, this is an action item. I need a motion and a second. So moved. Just a second, second. Trustee Zia. Just a second, Trustee Baxter. There are four items. There's board policy 5040, student records, directory, information, and privacy. This is a revised second reading, replaces BP 5010. There's AP 5040, student records, directory, information, and privacy. Revised informational replaces AR5010. BP5900, preferred name, revised, second reading, replaces BP5022. AP5900, preferred name, revised, informational, replaces AR5022. I have a motion by Trustee Zia, second by Trustee Baxter. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Student Trustee Hernandez. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Herlinda Chico is absent. Vivian Malaulu? Aye. Uduak Joe Intuck? Aye. Sunny Zia? Aye. 
Motion carries. Section 14 on the agenda, section 14.1, Board of Trustee Reports. Would either Trustee Untuck and Trustee Baxter care to go first, please? Whatever. I'll go first. I have no report. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Untuck. Trustee Baxter? Yes, and I'll make it uh, relatively quick. Uh, sorry for my scratchy voice. It's uh, raining here in uh, Washington all day long, and I think I caught a cold. Okay, on um, June 5th, I attended the Lakewood Village Neighborhood Association meeting. I'm the secretary of that board. On the 6th, I attended the nursing pinning ceremony, and it was fantastic. Um, a, an anonymous donor from the foundation gave every graduate a check. Well, she didn't do it. She gave money to give a check. I'm, I'm saying she because I assume women are more generous than men. That's a terrible thing to say. <laughs> um, on uh, June 7th, I attended the Pools of Hope Gala uh, on the 6th commencement, which was fabulous. I um, want to congratulate the commencement committee for selecting Shaquille Brewster as the speaker. <laughs> he was outstanding, motivational, a fantastic speaker, and, and selecting Sarah Poole for the valedictorian. She was a recipient of our, our homeless committee. What a, um, again, inspiration to everyone who attended, uh, how she overcame incredible odds and was a successful graduate. Then on the 10th, I attended the National Council of uh, Negro Women uh, brunch, at which I was honored and uh, uh, really appreciated this honor. Uh, it was basically for my work with the homeless students. Then following that, uh, I belonged to AAUW, which put on a tea, uh, an author's tea, of which I was the chair. And we had author Lisa C., who was outstanding. We had an audience of 140 people, so it was great. It was on campus in T1200. On the 13th, um, I had a Ronald McDonald House meeting in the morning, then uh, attended the Juneteenth celebration, and then an, another Lakewood Village Neighborhood Association board meeting. On the uh, 14th, uh, we had a, a Council District 5 Alliance meeting at which the mayor, Rex Richardson, was in attendance, and that was very well attended. There are seven neighborhood associations in the 5th uh, City Council District. On the 15th, uh, I attended the uh, uh, Foundation Executive Committee meeting, and on the 19th, I left to take four students. <coughs> That's where I am now. Uh, to Washington, D.C. as a graduation gift from uh, another group I belong to, Cameo. And we are having a fantastic time, except for the rain. And thank you for uh, allowing me to attend uh, remotely. <coughs> thank you, Dr. Baxter. I do hope you feel better. Trustee Zia? Thank you. I, too, hope you feel better, Dr. Baxter. Um, Daria, if you don't mind, Bringing up, um, can you not start the clock until the pictures are loaded, please? Um, so I wanted to just echo uh, the remarks already made about commencement. Um, this is uh, the lovely Fifonse Jenkins, um, who also got a shout out from our valedictorian, um, and um, excuse me, from our speaker. Um, and Fifonse was one of the first few students um, we helped um, with the um, committee that Trustee Baxter and I lead, um, have uh, led since 2015. She was um, just a joy, and I'm so proud of her um, for overcoming so much adversity, and I don't really know if I would be able to do it, but she did. She's achieving her dreams of becoming a, a pharmacist in, a medical, in the medical field, um, and it was so special to be able to give her her degree and take a picture with her um, and with both, maybe we can go to the next picture, Trustee Baxter and I giving her, handing her her degree. Um, she's one of our pride and joys as most of our students are, but in particular, she and a lot of our unhoused uh, students who had to overcome 
housing and hunger um, led the way, and they were the, our first pioneering students in the way that um, paved the way for a lot of other students. And I just wanted to recognize her um, for uh, her graduation. I, um, if you can go to the next slide, and this is us, um, where my um, we have our delegation pictures shared by Trustee Baxter. It was such a wonderful, wonderful commencement. Um, I couldn't agree with my colleagues and Superintendent um, Munoz more that it was really special this year. Um, next picture, um, this is Dr. Baxter and I in action. This was our 10th commencement as trustees, 10th um, year. So I, I, uh, I'm definitely feeling like a, a, this <laughs> a senior. Um, next picture, um, and this is our very own Damon Skinner's. Um, lovely wife. She also graduated. Um, Olivia, I'm so happy for you. It was a pleasure taking a picture of you in action. Um, I was going to announce your name, but I didn't think it was my place. I know you were waiting, um, but uh, really appreciate waiting for Damon. And I know there were some uh, complications, but um, it was my pleasure to see you um, walk. Uh, and I think that was the last of it. Or do I have more pictures? Um, and that's it, yeah. And um, lastly, before, um, I just want to um, recognize that today is Dr. Wendy Koenig's birthday. And um, it certainly makes us um, miss her more uh, and the lasting imprint that she left in this institution. Um, and she'll forever be immortal in our thoughts and our heart. Um, I want to give a special shout out to um, her partner, Chris Koenig. Um, Chris, um, my heart is with you. My prayers are with you in um, healing and during the, um, this grief period um, that you're um, still going through. Um, and I, again, miss Dr. Koenig very much, and I know her legacy will live on. And that's pretty much all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Zia. Uh, going back, um, because I did not attend the uh, May meeting, I, I wasn't able to share on uh, some of the activities that I participated in that month, but I just want to um, highlight uh, the fact that since our April meeting, uh, I really enjoyed participating in the ASU uh, EDD cohort program informational meetings. Uh, learned a lot, was able to submit an application, um, spoke to other applicants, and I'm really proud of the work that our uh, faculty, our staff, um, the campus community is doing to further their own education, and I'm just really happy to be a part of that. I don't know what the future holds, but I would like to commend uh, and thank Dr. Munoz for working so hard, and I know uh, Dr. West was also instrumental in securing that contract with ASU. So I'm really grateful for that opportunity, and all of that was happening, um, you know, April and May, and it was really busy time. I know Aaron Murphy and um, Dr. Tracy um, uh, Carmichael, and there, there were a few people who were involved in that, and I'm just, thank you. I just wanna say thank you. Uh, it'd been a while since I'd, you know, had to do a writing sample, so it was a lot, a lot more work than I thought I needed to do. Anyway, um, I do have my regular monthly uh, Naleo meetings and ACCT meetings representing the board. I'm working on a couple of projects with CCLC, the California um, Community College Conference League, and I participated in as many events as I could for May Day, the Asian Pacific Islander Desi Month, the um, LGBTQIA+. We also had um, all of our different graduation um, events and the grad fests. I'd like to commend all of the parties involved in the LAC, PCC grad fest. Thank you for doing that for our students. Uh, the scholarship reception, the nurse pinning ceremony, um, the uh, APID, just so many events at the end of the year. And uh, as, a, as a teacher, I can appreciate how busy this time of year is but it's also an exciting time um, to be able to celebrate our students and the hard work that they do all year. 
Uh, congratulations to our class of 2023 graduates. This was an outstanding commencement. I had a great time. Uh, everyone was so happy seeing you smile and your families. And I also had a lot of fun um, that evening after commencement when we all got together at Rock Sands. And um, I was, there were people there that I didn't expect to be there, uh, families and friends, and uh, it ended up being a pretty late night. So thank you for that. Um, I would also like to, um, you know, today, first day of summer, happy summer, but congratulate everyone getting through finals, and I know that uh, summer classes are underway, so uh, appreciate that. Um, one last thing, and I, I do have pictures, but um, it's too late to send them to Dario now. I wasn't expecting to run this meeting. Um, the honors banquet this year I thought was really special, so I'd like to commend our um, honors faculty for doing that. Uh, Trustee Baxter and I were there. And uh, it's just really nice to see how hard some of these students work, especially when they get to announce where they're transferring to. That's got to be one of the most rewarding events on campus, is these students who work so hard in our honors program. I also attended several events in the community, um, hosted by various organizations, and uh, just really grateful for the community that we have in Long Beach that partners with our college and allows us to serve. Uh, congratulations to the foundation on their amazing golf tournament this year. Uh, congratulations on all of the graduation activities that the foundation um, was able to provide, especially all those scholarships to our well-deserving students. And with that, I uh, would like to end my report um, is there anyone, uh, Trustee Antuck, Trustee Baxter, that you'd like to, uh, when we get to the adjournment, that you'd like to adjourn in memory of? I didn't get any notes, but I'm just double checking because I don't want to omit anyone. If so, not, just not interrupt that me. I've been told, but not that I've been told, but can I suggest that we adjourn the meeting in honor of Alex Hernandez? Oh. Oh, that's very sweet, Dr. Baxter. Yes, and, and definitely in celebration of his service to us, right? So yeah, yeah. we'd be happy to do that and, and uh, be happy to defer that to him. Okay, um, moving on to section 14.2 on the agenda. Madam Secretary, do we have any board committee reports? No, none received. I, I think I'm gonna set a record for the shortest meeting today. I'm just saying. All right, we're going to section 15 on the agenda, public comments on non-agenda items. Section, uh, item 15.1, do we have public comments on non-agenda items? Nope, none received. Excellent. Section 16 on the agenda, a second closed session. We have no second closed session. So we are good to go. Uh, no further discussion is needed. And now we move on to section 17 on the agenda. Don't all run out at once. We are adjourning tonight's meeting. It is 7.14 p.m. and we'd like to adjourn in celebration of student trustee Alex Hernandez's last meeting. Thank you very much, meeting adjourned.